everybody. This is Kristen from Christopia Studios. As most of you know by now, Christopia is the utopia I go to, the place in my head that I find happy. Now, what I'm going to do today is experiment on a canvas that was a failure. Um, I was getting ready to do a, like a sloth silhouette, and I was actually going to swipe some color across it so it wouldn't be really a silhouette. But I just do not like this background. I don't like the, how the black showed through. I don't like, I, I don't like any of it. I just don't like it. So I'm going to use this canvas to do an experiment on maybe, maybe making a backdrop for a little pretty landscape, a treescape or something. So first, what I'm doing here is I'm stirring one drop of silicone which is dimethicone that I use. It's this OGX coconut milk hair serum. You can get it at Walgreens, Walmart, or any, many other drug stores. It's only about seven bucks a bottle and it's lasted me. I still have two thirds of the bottle and it's lasted me over a year. But dimethicone for me is a safer kind of silicone and I like the results it gets me. So that's what I'm doing right now. I've already put one drop of silicone in every one of my little colors. My colors are usually whatever color I have mixed with Floetrol and a dash of Liquitex pouring medium because I like that smoothness and gloss Liquitex gives me in the end result. Um, so if you're just using Liquitex alone, understand that you need to make it thicker than you think or than Liquitex's bottle tells you because it will run right off your canvas even if it's level. So I have some colors. I don't know if I'm going to use them all. Um, and I'm going to deliberately pour in um, a landscape. I'm going to swipe in a landscape. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cover... Whoop, the top didn't come off. Let me make sure that this is... Okay. I actually have white over here that I need to use that doesn't have silicone in it. So the first thing I'm going to do is cover the top of my canvas in white because I don't want that stuff showing through when I'm doing swipes because I'm going to try to swipe some clouds and other stuff into the sky. Boop, boop. Sometimes I use my fingers, but if I don't want to get too messy too soon, I just use a little palette knife. Now again, if some of that orange shows through after the finished painting, I can always take a paintbrush and fill in the cracks. You know what I'm saying? And I only want it on the top, and I want it to cover the sides so I don't have to do so much cleanup later. But then I'm going to deliberately pour some kind of sky colors in there for cloudiness. And then I'm going to do the bottom. And I don't think I'm going to cover the bottom in any specific color. Maybe. Maybe I should, maybe I should deep green it like a mixture of... Black, because I want a forest background. I want a forest scene, black and green. I'll just put them together so I can get a really deep background. And again, down here, I don't mind if something shows through because, and by the way, if you don't have palette knives, you can use anything to spread stuff. You can use a spoon, a plastic spoon. You can use... For big canvases, I like this cake spreader, this icing spreader. There are so many things that you can use that you don't have to go out and purchase. So just keep keep that in mind and be aware of that when you're doing these things. You don't have to invest a ton of money. So I'm just spreading that around. Maybe I'll... Again, doesn't matter if there's white in there. We're doing an experiment, a landscape experiment, right? 
So as long as the paint is not too thick on here, it's all good. Heck, mixing that white with the green and black makes a kind of a nice little idea for a mountainscape. So I'm just going to put it in there. I have a, old t-shirts that I wipe my stuff on because I don't want to use too many paper towels and stuff that just goes in the landfill. At least the shirts I can let dry and use over and over again, these old rags. And they were too ratty to donate. So, all right. You could even, if you like childhood finger painting, you can even use your finger to lay in soft um, things back in the landscape. Yeah? All right, so. The beginning of the backdrop. Now these colors that I've put on here have no silicone in them. The colors that I'm getting ready to kind of pour in a little bit do have silicone in them. So I just want to let you know. And first I'm gonna try for a little bit as the sky gets lower toward the horizon, it gets lighter. But up here on the top, I'm just going to throw in a couple streaks of a darker, deeper blue. And then I think I'm going to use my plastic spoon. Oops, let me adjust that camera a little bit. I don't want to be off camera. I'm going to use that plastic spoon. I'm just going to swipe. See how it swipes that color in? the sky I'm not doing fully formed clouds I don't want fully formed clouds that's pretty now I'm gonna do the and these colors again the ones I'm deliberately pouring in places are the ones that have silicone in them Yeah, I'm just kind of randomly, pell-mell, grabbing some of that and swiping it off. Some of these spots are a little too big. I think I might can use your little stir sticks to drizzle on. I think I like a little more of that darker blue. Boop, boop. I don't know why I make that noise. <laughs> Might be Hannah Hart's fault. She Years ago, I started watching this little crazy thing that Hannah Hart did called My Drunk Kitchen. I think she's moved pretty much beyond that at this point, but she used to do that all the time. She'd put something in a recipe and say, boop, boop. All right. So, honestly, that fast, I think I'm pretty happy with that skyscape. All right. So next, I'm going to try... A little bit of um, I work back to front when I'm doing an acrylic painting or landscape you want to do that because your darkest darks will be in the background and your lighter lights lighter darks will be in the foreground and I don't mean you're adding white to your colors you're just making your colors um, more bright as they come forward they're dark when you look at a forest all the stuff back in the background looks super dark green, unless it's fall. And then as you move forward, tree leaves and other things lighten up as they come closer to the viewer's range. And if you've noticed, some of this green stuff has come through. There must have been a little bit of silicone laying in that paint. I don't care. It's going to look okay. So, first thing I'm going to do... Oh. 
is make those mountains a little more interesting. And I'm going to do that with both black and white because there might be some snow back there. And I know mountains aren't just black in the distance. They have a little bit of, and I keep dabbing it on my, my rag is down here below the camera. I keep dabbing it on my camera to make sure there's no white in there before I drop that back in. Now, I'm going to use this this time because it's got a little bit of a point rather than the spoon. Oh, wait, I want to put a little teeny bit of white, too. Maybe. You know, sometimes there are weeds and trees that grow on mountainsides that have a lot of gold in them, and they're dry and weedy looking. I might even put a little line of gold back there. It's not a super dark color, or maybe... No, I don't want to do copper. That's too brown. So maybe just a little line of shiny gold. I did a landscape like this once, but it was an accident, completely accidental. I did some kind of, um, I think it was a flip cup attempt. I've made many, many flip cup attempts trying to master that, and it's just not, not, not going to happen for me, and I don't have the patience to keep trying. So um, my favorite painting style where poor painting is concerned is swipes and just your basic standard dirty pour right out of a cup onto the canvas. But this time I want a landscape that's a little more deliberate. So I'm going to boop, slide that down a little bit. And mountains aren't perfectly pointy, so I've made it uneven. On purpose, these are not super high mountains, but they are high enough that there's no trees growing on them back there. And I'm going to swipe that down in into my picture. Okay, so you poor painters who don't think you can draw this is the kind of way that you can get a beautiful painting that looks like you've drawn it and spent many, many hours on it. Now, I will do some more detailed work up front, but you don't have to. You can practice your seeing skills doing this stuff. And by seeing skills, what I mean is some people, when they try to learn to draw, figure out that they can't because they're drawing the word nose, for example, but they're not looking at the actual shape of this thing that we call a nose. So they end up with a, a drawing that looks like a, a child might have drawn it because they're still drawing a nose rather than the shapes and the things that they see. You can look at a photograph of mountains and just kind of pretend them in like this. Just move your knife or whatever tool you're using for the mountains. I want a little more black up there, but that's starting to look really pretty awesome. But this kind of work, don't let anybody tell you it's not art. This kind of work helps you to see. Um, there used to be a book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. And I don't, while I don't particularly think there is too much science To that there is one thing that I really love about it and that it, it's that you can teach yourself to see things in a different way that's a sibilant s I just used to see things in a different way so that you can put in the suggestion of what you want instead of a detailed photorealistic drawing. It's more of an impressionist kind of thing. Maybe we should start calling this new impressionism since it's partly pouring and partly other stuff. I hope you enjoyed part one of this three-part full-length tutorial. I've listed the colors you'll need down below here for this tutorial. 
I also have links to my website and Facebook art page, and if you feel so inclined, a link to my PayPal tip jar. Parts two and three should be available to watch immediately if you're painting along. See you there.